I'm Joss. Hi, I'm Claudia. And this is the Let's Get Down to Business podcast. We're two cousins on opposite ends of the globe with a lot of opinions about figure skating. And we are here to deliver the news, recaps, and breathe a collective sigh of relief that all the athletes got their skates back to compete. Thank goodness. Hello, welcome back to our Restelcom Cup recap episodes. Uh, In this episode, we're going to be recapping the women and pairs events. And in our next episode, we are going to be recapping men and ice dance. Oh boy, there's always going to be something that goes down when you are competing in Russia. This event was... uh... It was something. It was it was definitely something. Even the good things were like incredibly there was no middle ground. It was either super super high or super super chaotic. Nothing in between. We should not have taken our reprieve from men's cast for granted last oh, week yes, because for sure. this week <laughs> So much shit going on. Oh my goodness, so much shit. But you will have to wait for our men's and ice dance episode to hear us talk about that. But for now, we're gonna talk about the lesser chaos but the chaos still existed uh, for women and pairs. Yes, let's do that. Uh, First, we have a couple of news items here. Uh, First one is not a very happy, jovial news item. And unfortunately, Brady Tunnell has again withdrawn from another event, uh, this time from the Golden Spin of Zagreb, which was supposed to be taking place from December 7th to the 11th, so just in a couple of weeks here. Um, And she will be replaced by another American skater, Gabriella Izzo. Uh, It seems as though Brady is still recovering from her leg injury, and this is the fifth competition that she has withdrawn from. Wow. You know, you'd have to think whether she's still battling her injury or whether this is a strategic move and she's buying time to get prepped for U.S. Nationals because that's coming up real soon. So hopefully it's the latter um, and, you know, the leg injury isn't as bad as people might think given the five withdrawals that she's um, done this season. So... Yeah. Yeah, I hope it's not too terrible. Um, I mean, five withdrawals is so much. And it. I feel like that's so much pressure since this is Olympic season and U.S. National seems as though it's going to be her first competitive ice this season. That seems rather sketchy. But I hope she's okay. Yes, absolutely. Um, I guess maybe the another short an, another short piece of news here is that a whole bunch of skaters seem to have lost their luggage on the way to Rostov. Oh gosh, <laughs> including uh, Roman Sadovsky and perhaps Matteo Rizzo, among others. Uh, fortunately, uh, through all that drama, they were reunited with their skates just in time for competition. Yes, I think somebody on Twitter also said that Tamara Moscovina had her luggage lost when she was going into Sochi, and the one thing she was concerned about was the cheese that she had brought uh, from the Grand Prix of France. So if she goes, my cheese is still in my luggage. And (laughs) Tamara, you have your priorities in order because French cheese. She's like, my cheese is still in the luggage. What am I going to do? So, Couldn't be me. I hate cheese. So wait, all t- no one give us one star reviews because I hate cheese. No, 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 no. Wait, can you please clarify? Like all types of cheese, like hard, soft, or it's like it's a blanket dislike of all cheeses. I will tolerate cheese in three circumstances. One is melted on nachos. Yes. Two is melted on pizza, and yes. three is very cold, very hard, very sharp cheese straight from the fridge okay but that's fine but even then i will only eat it begrudgingly i'll take begrudgingly Th- those three those three like occasions cheese. are very very acceptable but then again like american cheese doesn't it doesn't qualify so speaking of <laughs> as an australian never um cheese. which doesn't give me any sort of leg up but anyway I moving just, on to I, actual skating it's not a <laughs> instead of cheese podcast, i would quit immediately <laughs> that's true that's <laughs> our it, condiments podcast And in news that just came in, so the Grand Prix final, which was planned to take place in Osaka in Japan from the 9th to 12th of December, was clouded with a threat of cancellation after Japan closed its borders effective November 30th due to fears about the spread of the Omicron variant. And even though it was discussed um, that they would try and hold it in a strict bubble, it was officially announced that it has been cancelled slash postponed. For the second year running. Sad. Sadness. Sad. It's always fun to skate 
um, not me skate, but like have skating competitions in Japan? Uh, well, I guess we're just running through the entire Greek alphabet in variants these days. Yes, I think Russia was like, oh, it's some, well, not Russia as a whole. Someone in Russia was like, it's so sad and disappointed that we weren't asked to hold it instead. I'm like, Russia. <laughs> COVID still applies to you, even though you wish it didn't. Yeah, they're just like, we can hold any competition. We're ready to hold it. We're ready. Super spreader events. (laughs) Oh my Uh, god. I mean, it has been said somewhere, maybe I'm making it up, that the ICU would consider the possibility of transferring it to the end of the season. But then I'm like, it's an Olympic season. Like, (laughs) Who's going to want to do Olympics, then Worlds? Then, then Grand Prix final. Then Grand Prix final. Like that just seems half of the field will probably pull out. <laughs> likely, very likely. Anyway, um, we also have the 2021 Winter Universiade that was supposed to be held in Lucerne in Switzerland. That's also cancelled. So not just skating being affected there. So world's freaking out as per usual. <laughs> as per usual. What else is new? Yeah, exactly. Sad news, but I mean, I totally understand. We do not want this variant to spread as much as past ones have, although with the state of the world, <laughs> it might. And what's new? What's it's like the chaos of the men just keep coming to coming back and biting us. So <laughs> no, no. And that's next episode, guys. That's yeah, next we, we won't talk about them just yet. What we will talk about is our pairs. Okay, so the first pair that we're going to talk about is our eighth place pair, which is the Austrian team of Miriam Ziegler and Severin Kiefer. Um, They said after the short program here that they will unfortunately be retiring this season. Yes, the the great retirement has come to skating as well. (laughs) Oh my god. If y'all have been following the news. Uh, But... Here they skated to All I Want by Codaline for the short program. Oh, such a good song. I know. One of my faves. Codaline is amazing. Very, very true. Um, Unfortunately, what wasn't amazing was the side-by-side triple toes. What's new yet again? What's new? (laughs) Severin goes down. Um, Miriam held on to the landing of the throw triple Lutz. And yeah, not all in all, not their not their greatest program. Not their greatest program, however, one of the greatest songs ever. (laughs) <laughs> you can't tell I'm a Coda Line stan. Really? <laughs> um, they also, they've just got really good music choices this season. For their free skate, they're skating to Broken by Patrick Watson and Another Love by Tom O'Dell. Their throw triple twist isn't really their greatest element. It was like a low throw and a low catch, so it was awkward. Uh, but side by side jumps, they made an appearance here. Hello, side by side jumps. Welcome sometimes back. Sometimes you show up and sometimes you do not. Just like COVID. Um, Just like COVID, sometimes <laughs> it's there. <laughs> and sometimes we pretend it's not there. Uh, but yes, they did land their side-by-side triple-toe, double-toe, as well as the triple sow. Unfortunately, Miriam couldn't control the landing of the throw triple lutz and had to step out. And then she popped the throw sow into a double. And I was like, this is the second time this season that I've seen oh. a throw pop and... It is never... I always worry. I always... I've never seen it, like, in previous seasons. Or maybe just I didn't pay enough attention, but... It always gets wild. my anxiety. Not like I'm not an anxious person on the regular, but... <laughs> makes it's like me... anxiety plus. Anxiety plus. It's like plus, Disney plus, 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 but, like, anxiety plus version. A plus. My parents would be so happy. I know. <laughs> well, where's the compensation for the plus, right? Um... <laughs> As well, Severin had to bail out of the final lift, Uh, probably just not enough conditioning. Uh, It is reported that they have had uh, not the ideal preparation coming into this season, so that probably is the culprit behind that. But glad to see them out and competing and just hope that they're skating happily. I agree. Um, So coming up next is our seventh place finishers. This makes me very sad to say. (laughs) But uh, Nicole Della Monica and Matteo Guarise, the Italian pair. Oh, so sad. Who are also joining the great retirement, which is very sad with their music choices for both programs, just really pulling at the heartstrings. They're like very, I don't know, they... It's so it's such bittersweet music and it's kind of nostalgic as well. Um, and it makes me just go, oh. I really tired. like it. I love both the, the music for both their programs. Me too. It's very kind of morose and it's my style. So, <laughs> <laughs> 
So for the short program, they're skating to Let It Be from the Across the Universe soundtrack. Good choice. Um, Nicole just did not have a good day with the jumps, though. No. Then Nicole popped to a double uh, with the Salcos. Uh, And then she fell on the throw triple loop. I was like, wait, what is the word that I'm looking for? I'm mildly sick in case in case you guys couldn't tell my brain is just not all the way there. She's not mildly sick. She's actually pretty sick. But I'm because, actually quite sick. But, but because anyway. we love chatting shit about skating, we're doing this. <laughs> yes. Anyways, went down on the throw triple loop. That is what I'm trying to say. Yes. Uh, and then for the free skate uh, to Nature Boy and your song for Moulin Rouge. Again, just not a good program for them. No. Sad times. Sad times, yes. And so they landed their side-by-side triple sails, which was good. But then for the jump combos, it was called a double toe, double toe. I didn't really love toes when I was, you know, skating. So not my favorite combination. However, it was really odd to see Nicole and Mateo um, go into them because they have very different entries. So it showed like quite strange. Nicole does the three turns into the toe whilst Mateo does the C-step entry. So yeah, it looked wild. Not wild, as in like it looked weird. Um, But they landed it. Um, Then... Another bailed lift. Oh no, it's the no. worst. They always yes. look so disappointed. I know. I just I feel so bad um, for the guys when they have to bail out. I mean, yes, it's the safest method, but it's rough. It it is rough, and so you never. At least you can never say like, "Do you even lift, bro?" To pair skating guys because they technically lift every single day, all the time, every day. <laughs> it's their job. And a person, not just a dumbbell. Not just a dumbbell. <laughs> not just a paltry dumbbell. <laughs> um, but they did have a great uh, throw triple sow for the end, as well as a very lovely final lift for the program. But just, it was a bit of a haphazard program. They, were, they finished quite ahead of the music. But I'm just going to appreciate these two for the remainder of the season. Like, they've been around for so long. It's going to going to be weird not seeing their faces all the time. I, I know. I was like, imagine pair skating without these two. I feel like I've been watching them forever. I know. Imagine pair skating without these two and their unitards. Oh, I can't. Who's going to wear the unitards now? It's got to be us. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> we have to pick up the slack. <laughs> Just because they look great on Nicole and Mateo because they're ripped as hell does not mean it's going to look good on me. <laughs> <laughs> My body is uh, fridge shaped. So. All power to the fridges. <laughs> Um, but I'm just knowing that they're retiring this season, just imagining this, like these two programs at the Olympics also just tugs at the heartstrings a little bit. They're very much like farewell type programs and, oh, oh, very sad. But in sixth place and doing a better job than their previous Grand Prix is Yulia Shetnina and Mark Magia. And okay, so I butchered Yulia's name last episode because it's transliterated literally the stupidest way possible. And I googled the Russian Cyrillic and I was like, this is wrong. So it's pronounced like Shetinina, not Shetinina. So I apologize, Yulia. <laughs> My brain just... I am just... <laughs> yeah, blew up. <laughs> Sorry, Yulia. Um, So their short program, To Can't Pretend by Tom O'Dell. And (laughs) they did not fall in sync this time. So I don't know. I mean. What are the feelings attached to that? Am I sad? Am I happy? (laughs) Is it wrong to be disappointed that, you know, we didn't get Side by Side synced triple toe falls? Like, I mean, great. I feel bad to be disappointed. I, I like great that they landed at this time, but that synced fall was spectacular in its own right. Like great. they did so well though. They, they um did. their triple twist, their throw triple lutz, their side by side triple toes. So nice. Everything's so nice. Much better short program for them here. They had a season's best score of sixty three point nine nine. That zero point zero one man judges. My parents would be so unhappy with that score. Me too. Um, my parents too. Actually, no, they gave up on me a long time ago. So it'd probably just be me being sad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a therapy session, Claudia. <laughs> not a therapy session. Um, well, I mean, it is, but it's not. <laughs> it is, but it's not. Um, <laughs> 
just talking shit is my therapy, talk therapy. Anyway, moving on to Dust in the Wind for their free program and Team Blippy is back. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> FY, if you did not listen to our last episode where we talked about them, uh, their costume is uh, orange and blue and those are just classic Blippy colors. Anyways, if you are not toddler parents, you have no idea what I'm talking about. They're kind of they're kind of like bougie Blippy. Bougie Blippy. <laughs> like they, they shopped at Target instead of Target. So <laughs> well done to them. Um, well, they had a great uh, triple twist and then marked doubled the next jump combo. <laughs> yes. Again, one of my favorite combos when I was skating double sail, double toe. You know, we love it. But Mark, you got to be hitting them triples. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do need to be doing the triples. Um, the throw triple Lutz. Did, I was worried for that throw triple Lutz. Yes. Gutsy landing, though. Very gutsy. Um, yeah. But those final lift positions really, they're not the greatest I know you have to hit levels, Yulia and Mark, but, you know, maybe they're just like Blippi-esque lines. I don't know. I've never watched Blippi, but... Um... <laughs> Blippi likes to flail. Well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about our uh, fifth place team. Oh, these two really... I, I feel sad whenever I talk about them. I think they need a maybe a sports psychologist on the team here. But uh, we're talking about Kirsten Moore Towers and Michael Marinero from Canada. Who, with the rest of Team Canada, suffered with uh, lost luggage on their way to Sochi. Late skate arrival. These two and... really didn't need to lose their luggage. No. <laughs> Out of everyone, I think these two really didn't need to lose their luggage at all. Yes, um, but we finally did get to see their short program because it was the stream was working. <laughs> Poor Kirsten and Michael. Damn it. These two really just are on the struggle bus right now. Uh, but we, yes, we did see the short program. Um, the triple twist looked a little off and then the rest of it just kind of kept going off the rails. Yeah, so side by side, double toe, Michael doubles, and Kirsten's very tilted in the air and falls. And then Kirsten has to step out of the throw triple loop, which wasn't a great throw as well. And then the side by side spins, they started out quite well, very, very fast. And then in the final sit spin variation, they started getting very close together. I'm like, mm, look, I. I'm all about reducing the the number of Jesuses in between pair of skaters, but that's that's a bit too close, you know. At least have one Jesus in between. <laughs> At least one. At, At least, least one going time. into Christmas, you know. Have that respect. <laughs> oh, we did a Christmas. We need the whole the whole thing, the whole person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my goodness! We need to say happy birthday to a whole one. A whole one. Yeah. He's not, not one. turning one and a half. Exactly, right? <laughs> Got to be respectful. Um, but this short program, I kind of felt like it, I was watching, you know, two individuals skate this program rather than, you know, a pair team. I feel so sad saying yeah. this about them. I know. They were, I like, know. really slated to be, like, the top Canadian pair. Now we're here. But they do skate to Ruel in the free yes. skate. My fave, Ruel. Big fave, big Nothing fave. Like Ruel. But again, the throw triple twist, really not superb. Side by side jumps, the triple toes went great later on in the program, but the opening Salco uh, combo wasn't great. Kirsten did a triple sal, then stepped out of it, then tagged like a double toe on after. It seemed like she did a triple sal, single toe, double toe. And then it was said it was supposed to be a triple sal, double toe, double toe combo. And Michael just chose not to do the last one. Michael didn't do the last toe. I don't, I don't know what was happening here, man. It was chaos. I was just like, well, all right, cool. No, nothing, nothing good was happening there. But they, they, yeah. they did come back with a throw triple loop, which was fine. And then the yeah. side-by-side triple toes were okay, too. Yeah. Um, then the throw triple sow, it was downgraded. She, Kirsten kind of bails in the air. But strong lifts, though. I mean, the lifts were a highlight. Yeah, they definitely were. And compared to the last time they did this free skate. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Lifts were so much better. Yeah. And so Michael rewarded himself in the kiss and cry by going straight to the ice cream. Great. Like, as he should. Good for him. As he should. Exactly. Now I really want to, like, try that ice cream. Like, I'm not a huge fan of the ones that have, like, the chocolate casing. Um, never have been, don't know why, but I want to try one just for the sake of it. Just because Tamara Moscovina tried one, so. Um. <laughs> Is she the Regina George of figure skating? Yes. Regina George did that, so I did that. Exactly, but she's not as, like, 
She doesn't. Maybe she does have a burn book. I don't think so. <laughs> Could you imagine her? Who would be in her burn book? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I don't know either. Speculation. Anyways. <laughs> Um, there's another coach who might have a burn book, however. <laughs> you can probably you can probably guess that. Three guesses who. You only need one guess. Um, let's move on to our fourth place finishes, however, and that is the wonderful Audrey Liu and Mishra Mitrofanov. Oh my gosh, I feel like I have not seen these two in forever. Really? <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like I haven't seen them in forever. Well, they they definitely changed their style and packaging this season, and I think for the better. Yeah, no more Charlie um, Chaplin. Yeah weak charlie chaplin i'm sorry guys like it wasn't the greatest like these two programs um oh definitely, these two programs are a huge great. improvement over the charlie chaplin 100 percent, yes so for the short program they skate to toxic yes the britney spears one as well as a survivor remix by two-way and tms and i dig it <laughs> you know i am not gonna lie whenever i see tms i think the mask is there <laughs> Oh my god! So I saw it and I was like, "Are they singing? Or are they skating to a mask? Someone singing toxic on the Oh my god! Singer. But you know the pattern, the shirt patterns that they're wearing. Honestly, it could be a mask singer costume. Might as well have been on the mask singer. <laughs> they're awful. I'm sorry, but they're awful. Oh man! Like the only positive is that they match. So they do match. I, I, well, like, is that a positive though? Like, a, you know, double the <laughs> terrible. Do we pattern? need two of them? Do we need two? Okay. Like, who signed off on this? Anyway. I'll forgive it. They're skating to Toxic. True, true, true. The Mask Singer remix. <laughs> if, I'll if, excuse if, the shirts. It's fine. It's great. Fantastic shirts. <laughs> you have to guess who, who actually did the remix. That's the, that's the game of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but don't take your mask off in the Kiss and Cry, which they didn't. No, so great. no, no. Stay masked. Uh, yes. Um, solid and impactful Death Spiral um, and throat drill twist to open it's well choreographed especially to the music and great attack on their side-by-side triple salcos i'm very glad that we have an american team who can do side-by-side triple sows like quite convincingly yes um (laughs) oh my gosh and did you know that misha um gave a shout out to jimmy ma in the kiss and cry who didn't he he shouted it for the world to hear in both the short <laughs> so and great. the freeze i love that um skating club they all seem to be like really supportive of each other it's great they're so much fun they're like the fun frat house i there's no i didn't we don't have greek societies here or maybe i just didn't i wasn't cool enough to get into one but like a, a fun frat house aren't all only COVID has a greek society <laughs> it's the whole greek alphabet Oh, that's great. That is that is excellent. Um, but yeah, with Audrey and Misha, I think American Pairs is in really good hands with these two. Uh, also, I will say that Audrey, come on, don't be afraid to get close to the judges with your that illusion in the step sequence. Like now that we don't have the Kauri Matrix slicing judges' heads off, we need a replacement. Like get closer. <laughs> They're warmed up already from from that Matrix program. Exactly. Get closer. You know they need to be you know doing some isolation exercises and work their abs and you know and quads. So they need to be like sliding back. You know it's all about health. <laughs> so get closer. Um, oh my gosh. But season's best in the short program by like zero point zero two points. But still season's best. Hey, it's still season's best. We'll take it. Yeah. But not a lot of higher GOEs in their protocol. The main range was like from minus one to plus two. Hopefully, you know, <laughs> hopefully the unbiased judging system can, you know, create some bias for them <laughs> in future seasons coming as, you know, they become more regular on the scene. <laughs> maybe, maybe next time one of the judges will be a masked singer fan. Maybe. they Maybe the judge does the remix, so. <laughs> the judge does the remix. Um, in their free skate, they skated to Ancient Lands and oh, their uh triple cell oiler double cell. Very nice. Very nice. When will they change this to a triple triple? Oh, that, would, that be would put great. them in really good stead. Maybe like not for this season, but you know you know actually what? Maybe I think they might be a dark horse for that third Olympic spot. Oh. They're they're pretty consistent. 
Fighting words. Fighting. I'm not saying that it will happen. I mean, you're not fighting with me. I don't know who you're fighting with, but myself. <laughs> I feel like that that spot is contentious. Um, yeah, it could be contentious, but you know, if other pairs don't skate clean, who knows? But we'll see what happens at U.S. Nationals. Yes, see what happens. It'll be definitely a great fight, though. We've got a lot of somehow. There's a lot of American pairs in contention. <laughs> somehow. Never thought I'd be saying that, but exactly. Um, Misha shouted out Jimmy Ma on the Kiss and Cry yet again. <laughs> great for him, but not great for Audrey, who um, the first throw triple flip, um, it was well landed and hung on to despite the scratchy landing, but that throw triple loop, oh, so unfortunate. Audrey slips off the toe when she lands and well, just... fall looked brutal. Brutal straight on the hip and very hard and she was clutching it coming around the corner and I was like, pair girls, holy cow. She would have been hurt, definitely. But they scored 121.19 for the free skate, and it's a decent score given the fall, so they seem to be pretty satisfied with it. Yeah. They they looked pretty happy about it, and uh, Jimmy Ma is probably all, all, so also very happy at home. Yeah. How much did Jimmy pay for pay Misha to be included there? How much, you reckon? <laughs> Should have brought him back some ice cream. <laughs> All right, and let's move to our bronze medalists, um, and that is Yasmina Kadirova and Ivan Balchenka, who are now coached by Tamara Moskvina and Artur Minchuk. They switched to them May of this year. Uh, a quick reminder that Yasmina is a former Terry girl, as well as a former Mishin student. She has done a quad sow before, before getting injured <laughs> and moving to Paris, so... Oh, goodness. Well, remember, Tamara Moskvina has a burn book, so. <laughs> <laughs> and that burn book is actually just carved out, and that's where she keeps her cheeses. Um. <laughs> uh, we have Bolero. Yay. Yay. Never seen that one before. So I had I had just finished watching the women's free skate. Oh, no. And obviously Camila skated last to Bolero. And then I come and watch Pear's short program. So I'm watching back-to-back Bolero. This is like that one and- event. I forget which one it was, but we had back-to-back Mambo Italianos. Oh, yeah, but they technically weren't back-to-back. But Yasmina and Ivan, they skated first in the short program. So technically oh, it was geez. back-to-back Bolero. And I was like, cool. I'd rather have back-to-back Mambo Italianos, so. Really? That's the hill I'm going to die on. Okay. I mean, we did have Bolero at the club's, like, pre-DJ set coming on. There was, like, a dubstep. Um, not pr- probably not a dubstep, just, like, a club remix of Bolero at the end. I was just like, wow, this is adding something. Maybe just getting my heart rate up. Other people have, like, big political hills to die on. Mine is that I'd rather have back-to-back Mambo Italianos over back-to-back Boleros. My other hill that I will forever die on is that Five Seconds of Summer is a pop-punk band, but... What other category would, are they classified as? Like pop, like just straight up, like radio pop. That's that's wrong. <laughs> that, that radio pop? That's that's absolutely wrong. I don't know. Anyways, it's not a pop punk podcast. As much as I wish it were, we could make it. I would be very happy with that. Yeah, but hi, five seconds of summer. I know, like <laughs> as if they're listening. But hi, hi for the Australianness. Could you imagine if five seconds of summer was listening to our figure skating podcast? They would have terrible lives if they did. <laughs> But hi to the Sydney Australians, which is all of them in five seconds of summer. Anyway, moving on um, to talking about their actual short program to Bolero. Huge triple twist to open. Lovely side by side triple sows and throw triple loop was a little stiff legged on the landing, but she holds on to it. And uh, I think I prefer this team to Artemeva and Nazarichev at the moment, who we saw in the past couple of Grand Prix um, stages. I feel like the connection between Yasmina and Ivan seems to be more established. Um, and I enjoy their overall like performance quality a bit more. Okay. That's a, that's a valid opinion. But who knows? Maybe it comes to Russian nationals and, you know, I, well, actually, I would be able to tell um, Mikhail Nazarichev from everyone else as soon as he comes out on the ice in that <laughs> horrific shirt. Um, but I will also recognize Yasmina and Ivan with their lovely Prince of Persia free skate costumes. You know, the only thing that I can think of when you say Prince of Persia is Jake Gyllenhaal and how people were like, I'm never going to forgive Jake Gyllenhaal for All Too Well. Oh, yes. And then there was a response on Twitter that was like, All Too Well. Do you remember Prince of Persia? I'll never forgive Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> 
Anyways, I'm just here for comedic relief. Let's talk about skating. <laughs> no, I remember watching Prince of Persia for the first time. And I'm like, oh, this is like, this really could be my vibe. But it was also, wasn't it one of the first like major video game to movie adaptations? And then I was watching it and it was just awful all the way through. <laughs> you know, it's Jake Gyllenhaal's fault. Everything is Jake Gyllenhaal's fault. Well, that's a bit all too well, isn't it? <laughs> the cancelled Grand Prix is all Jake Gyllenhaal's fault as well. He cancelled it. However, Yasmina and Ivan decided to, you know, put the Prince of Persia into their own hands and deliver a huge triple twist yet again, as well as side by side triple sow, oily triple sow. Much better than Jake Gyllenhaal's delivery. <laughs> One day I'll stop ragging on him. Anyways, uh, unfortunately, went down on the throw triple flip. Yes. Unfortunately, the sow was called under, but then fall on the forward inside death spiral. Like, I have not seen a fall. so weird. That's Death spirals are like the simplest things for pair skaters. Yeah, even Jake Gyllenhaal could do one. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. One day I'll stop. <laughs> it won't be today. It won't be today, but I think you're giving a little too much credit. <laughs> like... I have not seen a death spiral fall in God knows how long, especially that, like, the way that they fell. It, no clue what happened here. I try to look, um, watch the replay, and I don't know, hands maybe slipped. Maybe Ivan missed the pick in his pivot and just everything. I don't know, man. Nevertheless, a shame. Um, but giving us content. Sorry, guys. It's content. Um, yeah, no, they, they have lovely elements. Um, good enough landing on the throw triple loop. Bam, right on the music, I think. Then a lovely Wally entrance from Yasmina into the group full lift. Gotta love a good Wally transition. And overall, I think they're I think they're nice. Who knows how they'll develop, but I mean they're under good hands with Tamara and her cheeses. And Artur. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh let's talk about our second place finishers, uh Daria Pavlyuchenko and Dennis Kodakin. Their short program to some Fergie. What did we say in pre in our last season's episodes about Fergie? We said we more people should skate to Fergie, right? Yeah, it should be like in the syllabus. Yeah, and obviously Dari and Dennis have um consulted that syllabus. Syllabus abiding team. Exactly. Syllabus abiding team, despite the fact that they are very innovative <laughs> um, and don't go by the book with a lot of their moves nowadays, uh, which is super, super refreshing. Um, especially for a Russian pairs team where you expect them to have, you know, the really stereotypical Russian syllabus abiding programs, <laughs> syllabus abiding Russian programs. And I mean, it's paid off for them because they came in first with this amazing short program. It's probably, you know what, I will say it's my favorite pairs short program of the entire season. I mean, Fergie would be very pleased with your assessment. Uh, Dennis was so into it. I was like, wow, <laughs> a lot of pep in your step. Well, I mean, he's trying to be Italian. It's true. He is trying to be Italian. Um, and also with the black swan in the, uh, in the free skate here. Yes, with apt arm flapping. <laughs> um, but <laughs> with this short program, throw triple loop was great. Uh, side by side triple toes were great and landed. Like I said before, the innovation in this program is insane and it's so refreshing. Uh, I love Dennis in the death spiral kind of going come on applaud us they just really i feel like they really like this character um piece that they put together and like i said last season for them character pieces suit this pair very very well they weren't known for their pcs skills um in previous seasons but they have got their brand signed sealed and delivered so very well done but also their coach bopping to the music by the boards is so great. <laughs> I know, I'm not sure if you saw that, but literally bopping to the music. And then uh, their coach greeting them as they came off the ice with love heart type high fives. Oh, so good. I was just like, COVID safe. We approve. It's fantastic. <laughs> um, and then we have this uh, black swan free skate. I love it. I also love the Daria had like bedazzlement on her hair. And I thought it was a hair piece at first. And then no, she's just... You know, stoned her, not stoned her hair. That sounds really weird. Um, rhinestoned her hair. I dig it though. And although the costume is really busy and I'm not usually a fan of like flappy bits, <laughs> I kind of liked it. Like, yeah, it was it, pretty good. It resembles wings. Maybe it's just in preparation to flap those arms. <laughs> Probably. Shout out to Jimmy Mom. Hey. As Misha says. Um, oh my gosh, triple toe, triple toe, double toe. 
damn. I mean, Jesus, again, was in between them to spectate it, but still <laughs> insane. Still, it was, it was pretty great. Triple toe, triple toe, double toe. Dang. Some of the men in, you know, in their free skates probably wouldn't be able to land that. So. <laughs> we'll talk about them later. <laughs> And again, with the innovation, forward outside death spiral, super, oh. super rare to see. Super, super rare. Um, this tr- team truly is all about innovation, and I'm glad that they've established that as their brand, like I've said, um, because it also covers up their weaknesses pretty well. For example, they don't have your traditional lines and balletic quality and generally skating skills. They're not as strong as some other teams. So I think it's a very smart move. Yes, it is. I really enjoy them. I think they're so much fun. Yes. What do you think? How do you, how would you compare their Black Swan or Swan Lake program to Boykova and Kozlovsky? <sighs> I think it's so much more fun. <laughs> we were talking about how Boykova and Kozlovsky doesn't have very uh, innovative programs this season. They're a bit bland. Yeah, I just, I, I stand by that. I, 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 I think this is more innovative than that for sure. So Yeah, like one program has condiments, the others doesn't. I don't like condiments, but I do like this program. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll enjoy condiments here safely yes. where I don't have to eat them. <laughs> yeah. Weirdly though, um, Dennis did a double toe as like a transitional move in the cargo sequence. I was like, can you do that? But... He did it. So, uh... I guess he can. I guess he can. But, yeah, this program, I think, is a lot more impactful and enticing and entertaining. Oh, um, totally. Than Boyka and Kozlovsky's. It's choreographed very well to the music. Uh, Throw Triple Loop was landed right on it, and it's such a moment. But bless Dennis, in that final lift, he was grimacing and working so hard. But, <laughs> like, fair enough. It's a huge program. There's so much packed into it. Uh, maybe if he didn't just do a double toe. Yeah, maybe. More in the tank. But, you know, you got to flap your arms, you know, be able That's to true. flap the arms in the choreo sequence and chuck in a double toe. <laughs> Rothbart would have done a double toe, so. <laughs> I guess. All right, let's move on to our gold medalists here. No surprise. Uh, we have uh, Anastasia Mishina and Alexander Kalyabov. Who... Esmeralda program for their short. I didn't think I'd ever say this, but... It wasn't great. No, it wasn't great. And not only because um, Nastya had to stumble out of the side-by-side triple sow, but I don't know. It it felt uh, like we've seen everything before. It doesn't have the same spark. It's it's like overdone, which it hasn't been because, you know, multiple people use... um, programs over two seasons but it doesn't have that spark anymore maybe it was just here because like we said in our last season's episodes we really love Esmeralda yeah I don't know what it was (laughs) she did look very sad though yeah it's very she's so she was so disappointed in herself poor girl these two work so hard though like they do my parents would be very proud of them (laughs) successful in a capitalistic society Growth mindset, as they say. (laughs) But yes, they're really, really hard workers and humble as well. Or as, you know, they seem to be humble. Um, They were second after the short program by only around like 0.3 points, which isn't too much. But still, reigning world champions coming in and getting second. I mean, it happens. Happens to the best of us. Happens to the best of us, truly. Um, Except I would probably not be second. I'd probably be down in like 10th. (laughs) Anyway, each to their own. <laughs> However, their free skate did win them the entire competition. It's to the snowstorm. And they have mentioned in interviews that they know people either love it or really don't like it. Where do you sit on the scale? I don't I don't know. <laughs> I think I like it. I think it's fine. It's different. I wouldn't say it's like an amazing Olympic moment program. Yeah, I, I think maybe that's my issue with it. Like, I do like yeah. it, but I don't think it's like a moment. Maybe that's it. I do believe they added, uh, you know, a few things to the music. Like, there were a lot of symbols um, that when I don't think I've listened to the snowstorm enough to know whether the symbols are actually a part of it. However, I think that they were added. I might be wrong. But they managed to choreograph all their elements to be landed 
um, on the symbols, which I think is clever to act as like an accent for the jump and throw elements, but also like would probably help in knowing where you are in the music, which is always great because I have zero concept of time. Um, <laughs> Go team neurodivergent <laughs> yet again Yay. with our no euphemisms and no time, time blindness. <laughs> oh, 100%. And our interoception problems. Um, interoception, time blindness, and no euphemism. However, not a therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Russians do also love tolling bells on top of symbols. So we had some bells going on in the program. and <laughs> They skated a lot better here, um, including a side-by-side triple sow, Euler triple sow, which is definitely an element that I feel you need to have if you want to be on the podium, like a, a triple-triple combo. Unless you're Sui and Han, then just... You just get PCS for days. <laughs> because they deserve them. Exactly. Dude, this final ending position, though. Like, I'm oh. fine with the program except for the final ending position. Looks painful. Poor Sasha's arms and shoulders must be burning. Like, thank God he's strong. Because what if he just loses it underneath Nastya? <laughs> that would be not good. Not a good situation. But just like, oh, let me get you lifted but like on top, like overhead lift, not just sit on my shoulder or I'll just hold you. But I don't know. It's, I feel like it's a bit out of place. It is. <laughs> Maybe this is why people feel one way or the other about this program. It just destroys the entire program. But <laughs> who knows? I don't, I don't know. I just think it's a bit odd. It is. Anyways, uh, yeah. they did more than enough to come in first here, even though they were second in the short program, which they probably weren't expecting. Uh, really came back with it in the free skate, uh, scoring just under 15 points higher than our silver medalists. They celebrated their win by choosing the Chistaya Linea ice creams with their whole team, which was so great. Um, I, you know what? The introduction of these ice creams the ice cream sponsorship has only elevated events in Russia. Maybe that's why they're just like, oh, you know, have everything in Russia because, you know, the the ice creams are here and everyone seems to love them. It's also elevated my desire for ice cream, but... True. I'm not normally an ice cream person. But... You know, friends off. <laughs> Podcast over. I don't know. It's just, I'll have it. I, I don't not like it. I, I very much enjoy sorbet. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just go over there with your sorbet <laughs> look i will i'm the lemon sorbet type person that's lemon? Corner, no one like lemon sorbet i don't know man yes okay hey you don't like condiments i, I cannot like i don't i cannot like the heavy dairy sweet ice creams so i won't like pickled vegetables and we'll call it even yeah yeah okay you are entitled to your wrong taste <laughs> with pickled with your pickled vegetable dislike, but okay. Pickled yes, we'll call it even. Dislike. We'll call it. I'd, wait, why? You can have a dislike of cheese, pickled vegetables, and condiments. And how does that balance with my one dislike of, or not dislike? I don't even dislike it. I just don't gravitate towards, you know, the dairy, heavy, sweet choc chocolate ice cream. <laughs> how does that balance out? <laughs> It's like ISU judging, just not. <laughs> it is like ISU judging. <laughs> it just doesn't uh, work ever. Okay, why don't we move on to women, speaking of. Yes, and we're going to start with our 12th place finisher, Olga Mikutina from Austria. Uh, she has been struggling with a right knee injury and had to withdraw from NHK this season, but we did see her skate incredibly well at uh, 2021 Worlds, so very nice to see her back here, but not the greatest competition for her. No, not a good time. But the short program is just all over the place. Um, <laughs> this costume is the worst no, I well, the biggest no ever. Well, I was going to start with the music, which is truly just all over the place. But add the costume and it's really all over the place. Um, well, the music is also very chaos. It's a lot. It's true. Uh, the opening flip toe combo, uh, toe was called on the quarter. Uh, and then... Had to put a hand down on the axle and then fell on the Lutz. It was a lot. I, I don't even know where to start with this. I'm just, just trying to picture this in Beijing. I think, no, yeah, she did qualify two spots for ladies in Beijing. So I think she's going. Um, I just can't reconcile the Olympics and this program being skated there. <laughs> you know what? Someone's got to do it. No, they don't. No, no they don't. Okay. No, they don't. Deal. 
it's voluntary. You know, you chose to, you know, to have this costume made. You chose to use this music. You sound like my mom. It was your choice. Oh my god. You made these choices. I'm gonna go and get a lobotomy so I don't sound like a mother. <laughs> so you never say that again. Fuck. Anyway. Anyways, free skate, lots of rotation calls here. Oi, um yes. on the Let's Toe combo. Toe was called under, Axel called under, Lutz called under. Flip downgraded. Oh yeah, flip downgraded as well, so yikes. Yeah, it's a far cry from the form we saw her in at Worlds, but I've got no doubt she'll get her skates under her again soon. Like we mentioned, she has been struggling with a pretty bad knee injury. But maybe, you know, Ludovico Ernardi is everywhere and she's skating to him for the free skate. Maybe he'll you know, help her have a great season because he's also having a great season. Yes. He is everywhere. Like COVID. But he's benevolent. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you you look at him and you're just like, oh my God, you're so sweet. It's like the grandparents that you're like, oh my God, you're so cute. He's like that. He's like that meme that is like your grandparents overseas when they're on WeChat. And it's like two oh of these. <laughs> it's like this meme of like two sweet turtles. <laughs> 100%. It's like that meme. I did see him in, um, I went to one of his concerts and I can absolutely attest that he gives off that vibe. Oh, so sweet. Um, moving on to our 11th place finisher here, we have Eva Lotta Kibus from Estonia skating in dresses that look like they've come off the runway. Oh, so beautiful. She looks like a fucking supermodel. What the like heck? Art couture. Truly. Who has this type of fashion? Like normally we just we speak oh about God. costumes because they have interesting points. Like they're not superb. But here it's truly superb. Straight from New York Fashion Week to Ristelicum Cup. American pairs men could never. They don't even come close, <laughs> Joss. With their BOGO black shirts with small colored details. <laughs> Uh, we've seen worse though um, <laughs> that's true we have <laughs> unfortunately Ava had an awful short program it looked like she had when she was coming off the ice she looked very dazed and didn't seem to have registered what happened uh, the planned triple toe triple toe to start turned into a solo triple toe um, and her ankle crumbled under her on the landing of the first toe uh, just really unfortunate and then the triple Lutz uh, was called under and she fell and it was a hard fall as well. Just, yeah, not not a great short program by any means. No, not good. Uh, the free skates started out a little bit better, although we do have another program to shallow. I do think shallow should be saved for the masked singer, but. You know, like some music needs to be retired. I feel like this needs to either be saved for the exhibition or be retired well the issue is that, that that always comes with spoken voice parts and i'm like we can just have the song it's okay to just have the song i i don't mind like spoken word things but they have to be done like nice and tastefully not just like have this weird i, I just don't like them with shallow no it's it's a bit odd anyways uh she started out with the triple toe triple toe which was great um, and then after that, oh, it kind of went downhill again. Oh, so sad. Yeah. It didn't seem like she gets tight enough in the air for some of these and didn't look committed enough to absolutely punching through the landing. Uh, but, I mean, she killed it with her dress yet again. She looks like she's ready to attend the Met Gala. Oh, truly. Like, at least not in a meat dress, but... <laughs> not the meat dress. That would be a costume deduction. Also, like... Yes, the voiceovers were odd, but then there was like a flat lining. Oh, that was, was like, not wow. good. I was like, I never want to hear that ever. Bradley's dying. <laughs> like ever? We don't need to hear really visceral car crash sounds no. like at the start of Xenia Sinitsyn's program. And we also don't need to hear flat lining. No, thank you. Never, ever do we ever need to hear that. Yeah, I'm like, yes, we know Bradley's dead. Not actually, as in like in the movie. And then we transition into Lady Gaga singing I'll Never Love Again. I was like, wow, like this is taking Morose to another level. <laughs> we just don't need this. Anyways. Yeah, the rest of her program wasn't great as well. Um, a lot of mini mistakes. Just didn't look like she was engaging her core at all. Um, an invalid element as well with the triple Lutz sequence, double toe. Yeah. 
not the greatest skates from her here. She's been having a really, really uh, inconsistent season with some competitions scoring like 50 points more than other competitions. It's, yeah, it's a bit, we'll see how she carries out the rest of the season, I guess. Yes, it was very unfortunate. Uh, Not very unfortunate, though, is Mambo Italiano. Oh, my God. (laughs) Ekaterina Ryabova in 10th place. Short program, Mambo Italiano. Here we are again. So, what, number one, back-to-back weeks of Mambo Italiano had me laughing. Number two, I am so begrudgingly singing along to this really enthusiastically. <laughs> I love it. It's, it's, I mean, <laughs> you know what? I am fully on board the Mambo Italiano gondola now. <laughs> I've sat. You sat. Right on that You gondola. sat. You're not getting back up. You're not standing. <laughs> I'm ready to be paddled, sir. <laughs> Paddle me. Oh. Okay. It's wow. not that kind of podcast. <laughs> I did send you a text um, throughout the week of Sophia Loren singing Mambo Italiano, just out of nowhere, with no context. Oh, that is true. That is true. You did yeah. send me that. Uh, I mean, oh, triple lutz, triple toe wasn't great to open, and the triple flip was downgraded. Uh, she bailed out of it and had to do a little tiptoe dance. Um, but it was nice to see Katya putting more oomph into the Mambo Italiano. Oh, yeah. Because I think last week we said that if, like, the music's big, but she didn't skate to its level, but she's she's getting there. She heard our feedback. <laughs> she, she heard us. <laughs> she absolutely did not. Um, but I will claim it. <laughs> <laughs> we accept. All right, and then for the free skate, we have Notre Dame de Paris. Again, this music cut is... A snooze fest? Not super inspiring here. Yeah. Like, are we sure this is Notre Dame de Paris? Or is can we just put, like, uh, Evanescence on? <laughs> I'm still not over that. Wait, just imagine if Katya Ryabova skated to Evanescence. You know, I think that would be inspiring. Amy Lee. Exactly. It would bring Katya up to, like, a new level. Bring me to life. Oh. This program did not bring me to life. <laughs> good, <laughs> good reference there. Good reference there. Thank you. Did um, my best. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure she knows how to do any other hairstyle apart from a low pony, though. Oh, (laughs) it's true. Although when I do a low pony, I look like a founding father. So more power to her. Founding father or Will from Pirates of the Caribbean, you know? Oh, no. That's me, too. No one needs to look like him. That's why I go with a high pony. No one needs to look like him. He's Orlando Bloom. No one needs to look like him. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, um, Yeah, not the greatest long program either she's 10th in the free skate which is an ouch yes it is an ouch um from one ekaterina to another we have ekaterina karakova in ninth short program again another unfortunate short program uh she stepped out of her triple flip uh and then lost the combo on the lutz boo boo deep sigh all spins and steps will look full though great um in the free skate we got some charlie chaplin going on here which i like it i think she does I do. she does very well f- um with charlie chaplin and she's been doing comparatively to her short program especially doing very well on the free skate yes i agree um i was entertained uh the first half was quite good uh we have a triple let's oiler triple flip although the flip was called on the quarter it was pretty great um and then the second half just kind of went weren't we're pretty much uh had to you know do some quick thinking on her feet after a not so great triple salco which was supposed to be tagged on which was supposed to be in sequence with a double axle um so she had to pop the double axle sequence after the triple loop which also didn't have the greatest landing either and she has had a pretty tough schedule of competitions uh recently winning the free program at warsaw cup so potentially fatigue played a role here. Fatigue always plays a role in my life. So. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> Big role, starring role in my life. <laughs> oh, congratulations. When will I see you up on the poster? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to our eighth place finisher. Uh, we have Reno Matsuiki. Yes, this little 17-year-old is so adorable. Her Lovely. smile is gorgeous. Um, Cleared my skin. Yes, my skin does need clearing, so please skate more. And all my mental health issues. I've just come to the acceptance that that's not going away, so. (laughs) 
Not even with her smile, unfortunately. Unfortunately. I mean, maybe if she sticks around long enough, you know, it'd be a gradual thing. Why is this? This is actually a therapy session. Okay, so let's talk about her short program to A quoi ça c'est l'amour by Michelle Emmer. Uh, Rito's dress looks like a Mandelbrot set, which, um, or Mandelbrot set. If you're a maths geek like me, you'll understand. Lovely, but also lovely is her soft knees. They're beautiful. Oh, so nice. So nice. My knees could never. Yeah, they just creak. <laughs> My knees just kind of crack and snap, snap, crackle, pop. <laughs> <laughs> like Cocoa Pops. Um, wait, <laughs> no, do you have like Rice Krispies? Oh, I forget you're all, you're in America. I'm sorry. We call them rice bubbles. You call them what? <laughs> we call them rice bubbles, not rice krispies. We have rice bubbles. <laughs> you know, you do that. Yeah, you do we'll... that. Do you? <laughs> rice krispies, so American. Anyway, um, shaking landing on the Lutz for the opening triple Lutz double toe. Um, I feel like this program, although it's lovely, is very junior-esque. It There's is. not really much going on in between the elements apart from some generic choreography. And like when I say that Daniil probably could have choreographed better, you know it's generic. Oh no. So it's not very nice. I mean, nice. but she's she she does as I know it's not very nice, but she does as well as she can. That's I'm just I'm, it's does. more of a comment on the choreography rather than her skating. I understand. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Yeah. I understand. I feel like you're my therapist who's writing notes and I'm just like, bitch, what do you mean you understand? Like, tell me what you really think. Uh, I hope your therapist never listens to this podcast. <laughs> bitch, tell me what you really think. <laughs> so I don't know where that even came from. I'm tired. I need a coffee. Oh um, my goodness. Anyways. For the free skate, we have... Uh, Moonlight by Victoria Tocker and Jennifer Thomas. Obviously, it's a spin on Moonlight Sonata by Beethoven. Lovely triple flip to open. So soft and flowy. Um, it started off great, but uh, triple, it's double toe. Kind of the same deal as what happened in the short program with not it not being a triple triple. Um, then a fall on the triple Lutz that was downgraded. Her feet just got tangled under her. Another da- uh, under call for the triple sow, triple toe, which he stepped out of. It was a gutsy attempt, though. However, um, lovely presentation qualities, as well as overall flow from Reno. Um, it'd be great to see her grow and develop, like I constantly say, the growth mindset. Um, growth mindset. <laughs> coming into, the, into this next quad. But oh, there's so many like great Japanese ladies with great skating skills which makes me so excited I'm so excited for Japanese women I just I know so excited all right let's move on to our seventh place finisher uh, Victoria Safanova with our Andrea Bocelli show program time to say goodbye is like so traditional and I'm also like I feel like we've heard it every single season but we haven't it's true it's one of those things that just keeps playing in your head again and again exactly Um, we had a fall on the uh, triple lutz, unfortunately. Uh, then we have a triple flip, triple toe flip called on the quarter. Um, I think that she needs to uh, do it full out. No marking. <laughs> no, exactly. No, no marking. marking. Needs more oomph. Like maybe she should skate to Marvo Italiano because Sarah Brightman and Andrea Bocelli, they're giving it their all, right? They're maxing out their effort meter. They really are. And she just needs to match the big scale of the music match the energy which you know we get it's hard <laughs> we do get speaking it. from our neurodivergent selves but anyway um the free skate is to your heart is as black as night which is a mood um by melody gardo and power by elliot wheeler featuring donna missile which is not a mood because i am tired i am tired all right, so opening uh, triple lutz, triple toe, real nice. Yes. Then we got a triple lutz, Euler, triple cell, also really nice. Oh, she was on fire today. Yeah, a lot more energy than the short program. I feel like this was like a very like soft jazz lounge vibe, which I very much dig. And I was like, maybe you just need to have not so big music and just do this. But then it's okay. So it started off as like this lovely soft jazz lounge vibe, and then we went into like a. Uh, like this power R&B jazz concert mood 
that is very much the mood of like drunk at 1 a.m. and with a live band around you. It's like a very specific thing. Wow. And I was like, wow, this is a this is some type of energy we got going on here. <laughs> Yes, uh, it was a great free skate, definitely redemptive from the short program. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. Me too. So she came in sixth for that free skate, pulled her up from ninth from the ninth position that she uh, got in the short program. So well done, Victoria. And in sixth place is Madeline Skeezers, who had... An excellent, excellent short program. Such a good event. Um, well, less so in the free skate, but definitely a good short program. Uh, we have the um, Kindle, what's it called? Amazon oh my, Prime. Yes. Amazon Prime exclusive. Uh, $2. Amazon Prime exclusive romance novel, My Sweet and Tender Beast. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it was such a good short program, though. Absolutely. Opens with an excellent triple lutz, triple toe. Great triple loop as well. Great speed carried through her step sequence. It was just so solid. I loved it. Good for you. Delivering to her potential, which we love to see. Yeah, for sure. Definitely solidifying her spot as the top Canadian lady, I think. 100%. And so Skate Canada, no, you can't be like pushing her um, into the background anymore, which you have been doing. So I enjoy her. Exactly. But... Interesting that Maddie's protocol had no GOEs higher than a plus three. That's very unfortunate. Yes, there's definitely things she can do to increase her GOE. Absolutely. Like better packaging. But you could all... Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but you could also argue that if she was Russian and from Sambo 70, those GOEs would have started at plus three. That's true. Not have ended at plus three. So... I mean, she did score season's best of 67.49, and she's like, eh. She didn't seem entirely happy about it. Which, I mean, I kind of get. I think she deserves more. She deserves, she deserves more. more. I think it should have gone to the 70s for sure. But and maybe she wasn't surprised because <laughs> that's how she skates in practice, and we just haven't seen a, a consistently clean competition or skates from her. So, I mean, possible. Awesome. But this Madam Butterfly free skate. Oh, this needs... Oh, we just need to not... Have Madam Butterfly. Gage Madam Butterfly. Yeah. Give her some Britney Spears. Maybe she needs to work with Adam Rapon for a season. I, I, I'd pay it. Absolutely. I'd do it. I'd, I'd pay it with my small paycheck. <laughs> I can... I've got, like, plushies galore that I've collected over the years, so that can be my payment. <laughs> oh, I'm never giving up my plushies. You will pry my plushies for my cold, dead hands. Yeah, but then, like, some of the plushies that I've been given just, like, weren't great. And the texture wasn't, like, superb. So I'm happy giving away those. Oh. But the ones that I've, like, chosen right. myself, yeah. then. <laughs> That's how we'll fund yeah. uh, new core. The, the bad textured plushies. Can you tell I'm neurodivergent? I have sensory issues. <laughs> I'm like, the texture of this, of this bear isn't right. I'm not going to emotionally engage. <laughs> I'm not going to emotionally engage with you, bear. <laughs> Your texture is off. <laughs> Your texture is off, bear. I won't emotionally attune with you. Add that to the list of why I'm going to be single for the rest of my life. Okay, continuing. <laughs> um, this bad and butterfly free skate. Um, just a little bit of a snooze fest. Um, I felt the transition choreography was a little weak. The jumps were okay. Um, there were a few mistakes here and there, like a step out and um, popping jumps into doubles. Uh, but just not a great vehicle i think she could be doing like so much more and experimenting because she's only 18 she's got time she's got good enough technique that it can carry her through to her mid to late 20s and she's just getting started experiment please or maybe she'll do that in the post olympic season when no one when no one's there do some britney yes um yes hopefully so unfortunately that free skate uh was seventh in the free skate which got her sixth overall she did come fourth in the short program so not too bad but uh from here on up we have everyone scoring in the 200s and we will start that off with fifth place finisher luna hendrix I'm a little sad about this. Yeah. I think she was sad about it too. She did say that the turnaround from Grand Prix of Italy was tight. And so she felt like really tight and fatigued at this competition. 
um, said that the training was good, just things didn't work out mentally um, for her this time. And I feel like she gave her all and so much more um, at Grand Prix of Italy that, I mean, it's understandable. Uh, but still, you know, not the greatest here. No, not the greatest. Uh, we have a Caruso short program. I still love Caruso. Never going to not love it. Um, we have a triple Lutz triple toe, which was not the best. A tight landing on the double axle and then a popped jump. Oh, and then a popped flip. Oh, boo. Boo. The step sequence was still rocking though. All level four spins and steps, which definitely helped her not drop too far down the pack in that short program. Uh, she only ended up sixth in the short program, uh, which normally if you, you pop a jump to a single, that's invalidated element and you get sent straight to the bottom of the pack. But maybe it was the Maddie face that Maddie Ziegler face that Luna had on going, going on at the start <laughs> that really helped her as well. She did have one of those. Love a good hand on the cheek. Um, and then we have our free skate. Again, just not her best. She really tried, though. Yeah. Like, we'll take it, though. Like, she fought for the landings all the way through. We had some turnouts and, you know, not superb landings. But overall, it was it was fine. Uh, at least all of her steps and spins uh, were level four. And her GOEs were mainly plus threes and plus fours, which bodes very well for her. Yes, it does. Uh, overall, she came in fifth and our fourth place finisher. Whoa, my voice just did something weird. <laughs> Mariah does that to Our you. fourth place finisher, Mariah Bell. This was a really good event for her. I'm glad to see her finally close to her form, like what we know she can skate like. Yeah, I really think this put her back into the conversation 100%. for the, that Olympic spot, for sure, especially with Brady Tunnell being a total question mark. Absolutely. And Mariah's one of those skaters that has impeccable quality. Like you can, as soon as she spins, you can tell the way she moves across the ice. Um, but I feel like she's very much a, like a Misha Kolyada where... You're like, please get your shit together because you can be literally so good. <laughs> yes, um, I agree. Um, the short program, oh, I'm still just not a fan of the short program, but she did it well. Yes, she did. Um, I'm a fan of the simple but elegant dress, though. It kind of makes up for her using, you know, the I'm going to force you to play piano at your white friend's house um, song, which is River Flows in You by Yuri <laughs> Am so I true, wrong, though? It? It's so true. Um, no. Bring back Brittany. I completely agree. Um, huge double axle to open. Triple flip, double toe. Not the best landing on the triple flip and just doesn't get the right lift um, for a triple. So she ends up doing a double, which I think is smart. Uh, spins on point again. I mean, despite her using River Flows in You, she sold it really, really well um, and had a solid triple lutz to finish off the jumping elements as well. Yes. Uh, she was not facing the judges. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> when she finished. It seems like such a small detail. Just like, can't you figure out, like, which way the judges are so you can properly face them? But let me tell you, it's maybe it's just me being really, really shitty. Um, but I mean, I get dizzy really quickly, so I would probably just be on the floor. If that also. <laughs> <laughs> but trying to adapt to a new rink and switch around your program's orientation is such a mindfuck. So, I mean, well done to her for quickly recognizing that she wasn't facing the judges and doing a hop around in both programs. <laughs> yes. Um, again, the change of key and instrument in this short program, just not to my taste at all, as well as the fact that judges aren't giving Mariah's spins better GOEs. Like, I'm just seeing too many plus threes. I'm like, Camila and Mariah are probably the best spinners in the game, and Camila's getting fours and fives, and Mariah's, like, at the threes. Well, anyways. Anyway. We have Hallelujah for the free skate. Maybe Katie Lang should just come in and be like, judges, come on. <laughs> They'll listen to Katie Lang. That's They'll, the trick. Yeah. She did all right. Um, lovely triple flip double axle sequence to open. Um, like I mentioned last week, it's a very smart combo for her. She then put her hand down on a throw triple sow. And I was like, that's not something you should be doing. It's a throw triple sow. It's, not throw it's not triple a throw. Sow. It's not a throw. Um, she's, not a, she's not a yeeter. I was like, who's throwing her? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's, not she's not being thrown. Um, 
hands down on the solo <laughs> triple sow. Um, I was like, girl, come on. Um, but a gorgeous level four step sequence with quite decent GOE as well. Lots of plus threes and a few plus fours. Thank you, judges. And we have a gorgeous choreo sequence as well. Majority's plus fours. So thank you. Finally. Maybe finally. the judges will like, maybe if we give you better GOE, you'll finally face us when you finish. But that didn't happen. <laughs> Oh, well. Uh, but in the kiss and cry, as soon as she sat down and the camera was back on her. Oh, my God. She took all the ice cream. <laughs> she was like, she took like four ice creams. It was, like, great. it was as a joke. I was like, why are you putting them back? Like, you pocket those things. I would just take them. It would not be a joke for me. You pocket those things. You have to do the buffet thing where they're, they're there for the taking. Like, take them. You know, we don't want food wastage. You know, I was that. I was that person at the buffet. Our Chinese parents trained us very well. It's called tactics. <laughs> Buffet tactics. It's a thing, yeah. guys. Don't a fill thing. up on rice. Eat all of the... Exactly. You can get rice at home. You can get rice at you home, know, yes. When, when no you go to a you. buffet, you need to eat the things that you normally wouldn't legs. afford. You need, to, you need to eat the crabs. Things that have value. Don't go for yes. the potato or the pasta or no the potatoes. rice. You know, don't fill up on those because you get full. It, you have to be tactical. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. I'm not paying $32 for you to eat rice. $32 at the buffet. That's cheap. <laughs> how did we how did we get to the buffet? I'm just saying tactics are a real thing. I frequently find myself at the buffet, so I should Exactly. Be <laughs> so tactics. Absolutely, you know. Um 140.98 a season's best for this free skate. She seemed very shocked with how high she scored here, but this is what you can do, Mariah. You'll get the points if you skate well. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens well sometimes depends who we are but yes. anyways <laughs> let's talk about our bronze medalist we have maya Kromik from russia with our short program that she's still not really selling to me but a little bit better i think i feel like that's her brand though it is a little bit of her brand like isn't it? okay she's not ugly by any means but i feel like she's the ugly duckling of this sambo 70 team like very hard worker. She doesn't really have that natural talent. You could say that Anna, Camila, um, or Aliona have, but she has improved a lot over the past few seasons, especially with this short program. I think it's a great uh, strategy for her to keep it because she looks a lot more settled into it uh, comparatively to um, how she skated it before. Um, and her flow across the ice has greatly improved as well. Um, she did a lovely double axle to open, Triple flip gets done with awful technique, but still getting awarded plus threes and plus fours, which is a big laugh. LOL. Big ass laugh. Uh, but then... It's that that Mariah's spins don't get oh higher God. GOEs, but that flip got plus threes and plus fours. <sighs> mm-hmm. Sad. Sad life. Ultimate sadness. Yes. But then the triple Lutz, uh, a freak fall on it. Uh, she was very, very tilted in the air. And she couldn't get a combo tagged on uh, after that. And that landed her in fifth after the short program. A Oof. shocker. Much like the triple flip technique. Oof. Uh, and then we have Moulin Rouge again. Uh, <laughs> we got a quad toe double toe, which was all right. Uh, flipped out of the next quad toe. Um, and it was it was okay. It was a season's best. Yes. Um I think Team Tukbaritsa have been very smart with Maya's programs this season, which, you know what, I'll give credit where it's due. Uh, they know how to uh, brand <laughs> brand their skaters and match music to their skaters. Unless you're Aliana Kostanaya and you don't take anyone's advice. <laughs> um, <laughs> but both her short program and the Tango slash Moulin Rouge fit Maya pretty well. And she's gotten a lot better in overall PCS, but I would love to see her facials improve as much as her body movements have. Um, but I mean, she's, it's really nice to see um, support for Maya in the audience with signs like saying, oh, Maya can do it, um, using kind of like the phrase of Maya Morget that kind of gained popularity last season when she skated awesomely at, I think, Russian Nationals. Um, but Good on her. She's not my favorite skater, but I definitely appreciate um, somebody who works hard and uh, stays humble. Yes. Work hard, stay humble, as they say. I feel like that's a song lyric somewhere. Hi, <laughs> somewhere. 
Um, why don't we talk about our silver medalist? Uh, no surprise, Elizaveta Tiftmishva, also from Russia. Um, sick again? <laughs> this girl must have the worst and best immune system ever. Like she's always sick, but then she always recovers like really quickly. <laughs> truly, truly. Um, she uh, was sick with a temperature prior to this GP, but and she said she was really worried that it was COVID, but got tested and it was negative. So good girl. Um, but she also said that she's still recovering from it, so she wasn't in tip-top shape. Yes. Um, so with her short program, it was actually pretty great, really solid. I feel like she is really getting super consistent now, especially yes. with that axle, and I really love to see it for her. Yes, I'm a big fan of this short program for her, actually. I mean, she is the queen of skating to Astor Piazzolla. Um, Oblivion, performed by Messia. It's really, really lovely. She did a triple lutz, triple toe as well. Uh, tight landing on the triple flip, but, you know, her spins are getting faster. Uh, and, yeah, I, I'm just, I think it's a great musical vehicle for Lisa's short program. Um, and it also kind of gets me into this, like, reminiscing mood. And I'm just thinking of, like, oh, Lisa when she was 13, 14, 15, uh, being, like, a jumping, typical jumping bean. And look at her now. Like, it's she's such an example of how maturity in age adds so much intangible PCS quality to one skating. Yes. Yes. Fantastic. Um, so then we have our free skate. Still not. Why are her free skates, like, always worse than her short programs in terms of I don't know. me liking them? Always. That's also consistent. That's also gotten more consistent <laughs> yes. over, over over time. Um, so we have a triple axle double toe and then a triple axle, although she did step out of that triple axle. So, yes. I mean, but it's fine. Stayed on her feet. Yes. Uh, we got a triple let's triple toe. Woohoo. Great. She added that to um, the free skate. Yes. Um, but yeah, really, really solid outing for her here. Just could not best Camila, which I mean, who can? Who can? Maybe it's the, like, the let's go part of the free skate where we start entering the club <laughs> that just tore it down. Gosh, I just, her free skates really, really just don't do it for me sometimes. <laughs> just, I, it's, like, why Why do we have to have a let's go? And then it's okay. Jake going Paul to is, Jake Paul is entering the building. <laughs> and that's when I will exit. Thank you very much. I leave. Like, who would you rather enter a building? Jake Gyllenhaal or Jake Paul? Battle of the Jakes. Oh. <laughs> That's such an unfortunate question. I mean, it was rhetorical, but if you want to answer it, like, go ahead. I don't. It's not It's not that time of the day. Um, <laughs> they did really love her, though, which, yes. I mean, she did well, so. Yes. And Mishin gave her, like, a laurel crown wreath type deal. And oh, I was like, so nice. You're a legend, mate. You're a legend. And somebody who is probably going to enter legendary status with oh my yet gosh. another world record is Camila Valieva. You know what? <laughs> Let me preface our discussion about Camila with the fact that reportedly her free skate score is higher than any Russian man has ever scored. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I mean, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's it's entirely possible given the caliber of Russian men and the amount of chaos that they bring. So it's very true. Yes. Okay. Her short program to In Memoriam by Kirill Richter. Oofed that opening triple axel. I got chills while she was rotating in the air. Um, did not get chills with that awfully pre-rotated triple flip. That's actually oh, a double because she only does two rotations in the air because she does one full turn on the bloody ice. Um, but apart from the technique she has on her flip and her lutz, as well as the combo jumps, it was stunning. It was absolutely gorgeous. Her speed and ability to carry that power and flow throughout all of her elements, uh, has been, she's improved so much on that front and it's really, really noticeable against other skaters, um, People have said that she's one of the fastest skaters um, in in the field. So, yeah. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. World record, 87.42. Season's best, obviously, because it's a freaking world record. Um, but this short program is, it's an Olympic gold short program. It totally is. I yeah. agree. Apart from maybe that 
<laughs> the double flip, <laughs> the pre-rotated triple flip. Got to work on it. I so wish, but the judges will ignore it. They will. They truly will. Um, in, in an interview after the short program, uh, she said something that kind of almost uh, almost made my whole perspective of her and her program like switch. And it also made me kind of forgive her awful flip technique, which not really, but like it set it aside for a bit. She said, my short program is a story about a butterfly that I catch and eventually release. Kill Richter said that this music is about memory. This program, I probably, this program is about my grandmother who died in 2019. Oh. And after her saying that, she started tearing up and crying. Oh. And I was like, oh my God. I love it. And so when I rewatched this short program, I started tearing up. Oh, I love it. And like just hearing, hearing that backstory really just, I don't know, it adds so much depth to the program, um, which she already gives because she's, she expresses so much more um, in this program than I've seen her do in other programs, um, as well as in past seasons, obviously. Um, but yeah, it, this program is truly gorgeous. Yeah. It's pretty great. Oh, and then we have Bolero, as we do. I still stand by my thesis that her bolero is great and enjoyable when she skates it awesomely. And when she doesn't, I'm like, oh, bolero. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. But holy shit, this first half of this yes. program was amazing. We got a quad sal. We got a triple axel. We got a quad toe, triple toe. <laughs> quad toe, Euler, double sow. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I mean, the double sow was a mistake. Um couldn't stop the rotation quick enough for the quad toe. I'm like, hey, wow, okay, you over-rotate that thing. Yes. You'd be talented. Um, and she was also too close to the boards as well, so she had to only opt for a quad toe Euler double sail. Oh, like, only. Boo. Boo. Um, but including a wonderful step sequence, level four, she's really getting into the choreo and interpretation a lot more. So well done to her. And just wow, wow, wow. Oh my gosh. Wow. Amazing. We got a new world record again. By five points. <laughs> oh my gosh. We also love Kami um, winning the men's event. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk about who won the men's event in a second. Um, but also shout out to Mark Hanretti who called out Camila's Flip and Lutz heavy pre-rotation. I was like, thank you. That's also amazing part, an amazing part of this free skate. So there we have <laughs> it. It was all great. <laughs> There we have it. Um, but honestly, it's looking incredibly good for Camila for the Olympics. And honestly, I will have to say that I have yet to see a program or a skate that can match match these two programs in, in conjunction. It is true. Well, there we have it. We have our gold medalist. And why don't we head on into our kiss and cry? Okay, hello. This is uh, future Joss and Claudia. We <laughs> did record us. future us. Uh, we did record our um, next discussion of the Grand Prix before uh, it was announced that the Grand Prix final was cancelled. Uh, we tried to be time savvy, and that just did not go well. <laughs> it for really us. didn't work out for us, unfortunately. The one time that we tried to be time savvy it didn't work out for us but uh here it is uh please enjoy our discussion of the now cancelled <laughs> pre-final pre-final <laughs> okay so let's start off this kiss and cry segment with our profession of love and sadness about mark and ready so mark has a full-time commitment with dancing on ice in the uk and so his commentary for uh, Ross Telecom Cup was actually his last one for quite a while, which uh, that caused everyone on Twitter to cry and be like, Mark, you've been the best. And just the amount of support and positive comments and emotions and all of that towards Mark has been very well deserved because we love, we love someone who, uh, who isn't afraid to call out pre-rotation and jump technique from... Uh, from the sketchy skaters out there. <laughs> from all you sketchy skaters out there. Um, all you yes. sketchy skaters. But still managing to be respectful. It's true. It's true. As as some folks 
fail to do. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, he will not be with us um, maybe for a little while this season, which is highly unfortunate. But us, like the rest of Twitter, is crying that he will not be here. And who knows? Maybe he'll pop in for a quick moment or two. At least that's the hope. Well, hopefully for the Olympics, that would be very nice. Oh, because that would be great. That'll be so good. Lord knows we'll be stuck with Simon for the Olympics. Just our luck. And I will be watching Peacock <laughs> instead. <laughs> Commentary free. The the Omicron variant and Simon. <laughs> We're in the bad place. Oh, absolutely. That's the new TV show, The Bad Place. <laughs> Starring Simon and Omicron. Um, anyways, moving on. So we're going to talk about our Grand Prix final qualifiers for our women and pairs, which is exciting. Oh my gosh, it's this point of the season. Ooh. Yes, uh, maybe I will reclaim my weekends. Not likely since <laughs> I have a toddler. Um, but why don't we talk about uh, the qualifiers for pairs first? Um, okay, so the first and second qualifiers are uh, Mishna and Galiamov with 30 points from Russia, as well as Sway and Han also with 30 points from China. No surprises there. Uh, we also have our third qualifier, Tarasova and Morozov from Russia with 28 points. Boykova and Kozlovsky from Russia with 26 points. Pavlyuchenko and Kodakin from Russia <laughs> with 26 points. And you guys hear a theme going on here? <laughs> There's a theme. And, um, of course, faves Miura and Kihara from Japan with 24 points. I'm so happy that they qualified. Me too. Go them. They Go them. Go them. They... <laughs> They squeeze into that final spot, and deservedly so. The alternates are Artemeva and Nazarichev, who were also on 24 points. However, due to tiebreakers, they missed out on that final spot. Our second alternate is Kniram and Fraser from the US. They're on 20 points. And our third alternates are Kanan Gribble and Leduc from the US as well, also on 20 points. Yes. Um, so it'll be a Russian fest. <laughs> Russia fest. It's an it's an Asian fest, essentially, if you count Russia as Asia, except all these pairs are from the western part of Russia. So anywho's I tried my best, guys. I tried my best. <laughs> we tried. We tried to find a common thread. Um, so that is our pairs Grand Prix final. I feel like no no big spoilers or no big upsets there no I feel like. but i feel like some some of the teams in there could be very big dark horses that are ready to take the uh take the medal stand if one of the super big teams and favorites slip up so i'm actually pretty excited for this i think it's going to be a good matchup yes we shall see um and let's talk about our women who qualified for the grand prix final again no big surprises here but no big surprise <laughs> So qualifying in first, we have obviously Camila Valieva from Russia, 30 points, world records, yup de yup, obviously first qualifier. Um, in second, we have Anna Shabakova, also from Russia and also with 30 points after winning both of her Grand Prix legs. In third spot for qualifying is Elizabeth Tuktamisheva from Russia, <laughs> scoring 26 points. In fourth, we have the lovely Kaori Sakamoto of Japan coming with 24 points. So glad she's in there. Fifth, we have Maya Kromik from Russia, also scoring 24 points. And sliding into that last spot, we have Aliona Kostanaya from Russia, 24 points. Oof, she made it. She made it. We, we, no one was sure that she would, but we're glad as, as Aliona fans. It's, it's all that glitter. It's the glitter that got her in. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, oh, so, okay. So let's talk about her alternates here. Our first alternate is Young Yu from Korea with 22 points. Our second alternate, oh, very sad. She did not have the weekend, I think, that she no. had wanted. But, I mean, there were some very strong contenders here. But anyways, uh, Luna Hendricks from uh, Belgium with 18 points. And then our third alternate, oh, I wish she had qualified. <gasps> You know, Me too. I mean, honestly, I wish they all had qualified, but we can't have Me that. Too. Can we? Uh, we have Mai Mihara from Japan with 18 points. You know what? Just take all the alternates. I wouldn't mind take them all. You know, nine skaters. Take them all. It'd be, it's such a good field, though. Anyway, it's a good one. Yes. Very excited for the Grand Prix final. The, it will be in two weeks, I believe, in Osaka. So we get one week end 
reprieve <laughs> before God. it all kicks off again. Thank goodness. <laughs> All right. So I guess that is it for this episode at the end of our kissing cry. So I am Joss and you can come and chat with us at Let's Get Down Pod. That's L-U-T-Z Get Down Pod on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to work with us, please shoot us an email at Let's Get Down Pod at gmail.com. I'm Claudia, and if you like this podcast and want to cheers Russian ice creams with Tamara Moskvina and her crew, please leave us a review and give us some five-star love. We would really appreciate it. Thanks, y'all, for listening. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.